Peace, family. My name is Vicki Dillard. It's so pleased to be with you here on African Diaspora News Channel. As you come in, be sure to give us a big thumbs up, thumbs up, and share the broadcast. When you do that, it makes it more likely that other folks are notified that we're here. So you're helping us to be strategic, to grow our alternative voice. And how many of you all know that we're your voice, a counter voice to the voice of the oppressive media apparatus. And we thank you so much for doing that. By the way, family, we have an app. Yes, you heard that right. African Diaspora News Channel has their own app. This helps us to take the limits off and gives us another avenue to expand and to grow our voice around the world. You can help us to do that by subscribing. I think you're going to love it. And of course, be sure to share the information with others. Thank you so very much. Family, you all know that for some time now, I've been doing back-to-back -back coverage on the goings on in Chicago. Chicago um, is not only um, just a popular and famous and profound city. I think that they, in my opinion, can represent a place of black conscious revolutionary renaissance. There are so many formidable events politically, socially, economically that have taken place there. And certainly with the migrant crisis that have been ha has been happening throughout the United States, uh, Chicago, and the way in which in particular Black Americans in Chicago have begun to expose and to counter some of the multiple agendas that the powers that shouldn't be have been engaged in there concerning them prioritizing and putting economic, financial tangibles in the hands of folks that committed, uh, that violated uh, federal law to get here and exposing that and saying, hey, how can you sit here and give them money and resources and housing and then step over black homeless veterans? How can you justify bringing these folks here when black families had to move out uh, of the city uh, to somewhere more affordable? How can you justify these things when we have built this country and after hundreds of years, we still have the United States of America refusing to pay its reparations debt? Reparations is not charity, beloved. Reparations is not being altruistic. Reparations is not being philanthropic. Reparations is a debt that this government owes to us. But they find ways to put hundreds of billions of dollars in the hand of Nazi Ukrainians to fight an unjust war against Russia. They find ways to put money in the hands of other foreign governments and to help legal and illegal immigrants and give assistance and political aid to LGBT community, the AAPI community, uh, beloved, the Afghans and so forth. It's a new day, baby. We're not going to be pimped anymore. Well, you all know I've already discussed and exposed the fact that the mayor of New York, uh, the Chicago mayor, have all had to now admit that some of the migrants that have been coming into their particular cities have been coming with multiple sicknesses and infirmities, with some stuff. And we have been asking the questions, how on earth is the so-called most powerful country on the planet allowing folks to come in here unchecked regarding their health, or their background or anything else, right? So just to be clear, there are multiple agendas that are at work. There are multiple moving parts, but one agenda that I want to specifically discuss is this connection with uh, a larger global agenda that they may have and using the border to make its way, to, using the border as an infiltration point into the country. So then when we look up again, we're sitting up here saying, how did this happen and how did this get here? But now uh, 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 you're seeing that these different governmental officials are having to now admit that folks are coming here with all these different infirmities and sicknesses. Well, I discussed this sometime before. Be sure to check it out. Uh, uh, and one of the previous broadcasts where I'm discussing Chicago and the mayor and his officials having to admit that some of the migrants are bringing in different infirmities. Well, as a follow-up to that, guess what? If you saw that broadcast, remember, I asked you all, I suggested you haven't heard this probably anywhere because you may not have read it anywhere, but this is how my mind works. I'm wondering if our people have a case to begin to sue their city and their governmental officials for allowing the population to be exposed to some of these illnesses and what effect does that have it on the community? And I posited the question, how long did the mayor know that this was going on? Because remember his recent admission about they're coming here sick only came because this, this five-year-old passed away, remember? So I started to uh, seed out 
suspicion and how long did the city know there were problems that were going on and what responsibility does the city have to protect its population against such things? There are preemptory steps that your government is supposed to take, whether you know it or not. And I'm simply saying, perhaps somebody needs to talk to an attorney. Well, guess what? This news just came out. This piece from Paris Schultz says, emails show Johnson, city officials notified about sewage, roaches, and illnesses at Pilsing, Pilsing Migrant Shelter almost two months before the boy's death highlighted problems. Somebody talk black to me. I told you I'm prophetic first, baby. You got to catch that though. And this is some of the things that I teach about us tapping into the unseen government so that we are able to be uh, to navigate on this plane in my monthly, very, very inexpensive monthly spiritual mastermind court that helps you to get the edge in every area of your life. You can find out more about that on my website at vickiplanet.com. That's V-I-C-K-I planet.com. Listen to what this says. I'm not going to read this, all of this, of course, but I want to read you just uh, a few excerpts in relevant part, right? It talks about how on December 17, 2023, John Carlos Martino Rivero uh, died at Comer Children's Hospital. That's the five year that I'm talking about. It talks about how several other individuals were taken to the hospital from that shelter with respiratory illnesses, according to the mayor's office. Um, it, it discusses uh, all types of other things surrounding that and what the um, Cook County Medical Examiner's Office said there had been no determination made about his death or other illnesses at the shelter. Uh, uh, tied to unsanitary conditions. They're doing a lot of speculative talk and giving some just basic information, but I want you to listen to this. It says, however, emails exclusively obtained by WTTTW News shine new light on the timeline. Y'all know I discussed this long ago, weeks ago, before this came out just the other day, of when Johnson and his administration were made aware of conditions at the shelter and what exactly those conditions were. The emails also raise questions about how the administration has monitored conditions at migrant shelters in the city's oversight of outside vendor favorite staffing, which manages day-to-day -day operations at migrant shelters. Y'all listen. It says on October 27, Johnson and several top staffers, including the Department of Family and Support Services Commissioner Brandy Kanazi, were warned by email of alleged unsafe conditions at the shelter. Around that time, a concerned community volunteer reached out to the office of Alderman Nicole Lee of the 11th Ward. Lee then promptly sent an email to the mayor relaying those concerns. WTTT filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the city for a copy of that October 27 email and received a heavily redacted document in response. They go on to talk a little bit about that. The next six paragraphs of the message were entirely redacted in the city's records response to WTT News. WTTTW News. Watch this. It says, but a nonprofit government accountability organization called the Foya Bakery shared with WTTW News an unredacted version they say they obtained. The redacted parts allege, y'all listen, the shelter had insufficient bathrooms, exposed pipes with raw sewage, cockroach, cockroach infestation, a possible outbreak of illness with many people being sick, insufficient provision of meals and water and poor and disrespectful treatment. It says a migrant's housed in the shelter by staff, according to the email. Now, this is not to just say that these migrants deserve any old kind of treatment. We have humanity about us. What I'm trying to show you is that it is absolutely foreseeable that people that violate federal law to get here and that you prioritize over us might be coming here with an illness that the population, the citizens in the United States might be able to catch. And some old stuff. Y'all read through the lines. See my blinkage. Read through the lines of what I'm talking about. And the fact, the environment in which you put them in could possibly expedite the spread of it into the population, exposing and endangering American citizens. What of that? Now, what did I say to y'all weeks before, before any of this was ever brought to the fore? This was just me being intuitive. Is somebody gonna have to talk to an attorney and hold your city officials accountable? 
for possibly endangering Chicago citizens. This is problematic for more reasons than I can say in this short period of time. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it below. My name is Vicki Dula, your sister with the Curly Brace. Thank you so much for tuning into African Diaspora News Channel. Be sure to share the broadcast and let everybody know that your sister with the Curly Brace, Vicki Dula, is on. Thank you so very much.